Hello everybody, this is Tim. I recently watched the most worthless piece of shit horror film I've ever seen in my life, or at least so far doing my reviews. That is Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation. I, I wish I had a crown of just like dog shit I could put on this film. Uh, I do own this film because like I said before, I'm a completist and I gotta own even the shittiest of sequels. And this film is definitely qualifies as being pure shit. It is 4 o'clock in the morning and I just got done watching this film late at night. This film... <laughs> Is the most worthless piece of shit I've ever seen. It tries to reference the other three films, can try to can, tries to connect itself to it, tries to connect itself to them loosely, but the continuity and the plot of this film is so like out there and so completely different from any of the other films that there's no connection whatsoever. So I don't even know why they bother. It's in a cheesy monologue over the beginning of the film where it, it says it tries to connect it to the first film, and it says basically we had two minor incidences, two minor incidents re after that, but we're obviously related. And for like five long years, it's been quiet. Ooh, scary shit. No, this film's about as scary as a fucking toaster strudel. But anyway, to jump right into the plot of this movie here, this film is actually directed by Kim Hinkle, who I believe helped write the first movie. Uh, somebody's took a bad career dive here. But anyway, to jump right into the plot, it's prom night. This movie doesn't even take place in Texas, I don't think. It's prom night. You got Renee Zellweger, who's this girl who... It's supposed to be like the ugly duckling, but she's clearly not ugly. And uh, she's got this guy who pretends to be her boyfriend. He's a pothead or something like that. And, um, at the beginning of the film, before the prom, she's getting ready to dress up for prom. And her mom constantly gets remarried. And she's married. She keeps getting married to guys who try to hit on her and want to fuck her or whatever. Uh, but the guy, one of the, the stepfather tries to fuck her, tries to hit on her, but he doesn't get any. She manages to get out of it. Her prom date shows up. Um, she gets him to like pose as her boyfriend so other guys won't try to hit on her or mess with her or whatever, but they're really just friends who like to smoke pot all day. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. But anyway, jump right in this shit fucking sandwich here. They head to prom. Um, I believe the the boy's name is Sean. This film stars Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey both before they became stars, and I've heard they both hate this film, and I don't blame them. Um, I, I don't like it when like big stars try to uh, say that their horror film roots or whatever the low budget films they played in aren't that good or the horror films they played in weren't that good or whatever because now they're big stars. But uh, in this case, I can see why Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey would absolutely hate this film because it's utter shit. But uh, I've heard Matthew McConaughey will pay you a dollar for every copy you bring to him. I've heard Renee Zellweger like fucking paid her agent or somebody to find every copy of this film and locate it and bring them all to her so she can burn them all. Once she became famous, I heard she did that. Which again, I don't really blame her. I mean, that might be a little bit overkill, but this film is pretty fucking bad. This is the worst film I have reviewed. But anyway, it's easily the worst horror film I've seen thus far. Jump in the story here, they head to the prom. You introduce to the other characters. You got the, the hot chick who's supposed to be dumb, but she's like so overly fucking dumb. It's unbelievably, I mean, it's unbelievably stupid. And she's got this boyfriend who's like, the fucking asshole guy of the movie. Acting wise, every the pothead guy, his name, his name act character's name is Sean. He sucks. He's an abomination to acting. Uh, the the hot girl who's like who's like incredibly stupid. Her acting, I don't even remember the character. I think her character's name was Heather. Um, as for acting wise, she is fucking terrible. She's only slightly better than Sean. The guy who plays the asshole, his character is a piece of shit. You don't give a fuck about him, but because he's such an asshole. But his, his acting, the act, actor's acting is actually better than the hot chick and uh, and the potheads. <laughs> Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey's acting is better than anybody in this film. But uh, anyway, back to the story here. And then she runs, she comes outside of the prom and she's like talking to this fucking woman who's like, I guess was taking the invites or whatever to prom or something like that or whatever they do at prom I don't know when they have the woman outside who's like greeting people when they come in I don't, I'm not sure what she is they're taking the votes for prom king and queen or whatever the fuck but anyway she's talking to her uh, Heather is talking to her asking her if she's seen her boyfriend and she's like I thought they broke up and then you get this other girl come out there who's supposed to be like friends with Heather and she's talking to her and she keeps repeating the same fucking line over and over again it's some of the worst acting and dialogue I've ever heard she keeps going like 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 five or six times talking about how this woman likes to stir up trouble and she's just telling her stuff about her boyfriend just to like stir up trouble supposedly <laughs> even though he actually is cheating on her and she stands there for like five minutes keeps going like 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 i'm like fucking die please but anyway uh she goes off looking for her boyfriend and finds him like fucking making out with some other chick and then she goes gets mad gets in the vehicle gets ready to head out he jumps in the vehicle with her starts 
talking to her and telling her a big bunch of shit. Renee Zellweger and the fucking pothead are hiding in the back getting high. They pop up and they're... So basically we got the main characters here. I kind of like the setup of like a prom. Like people on prom night running to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family. I kind of like that idea. But the way it's played in this film... Fuck. I need like an ounce of cocaine to even make it through this movie. To make it enjoyable, I would need an ounce of cocaine. But anyway, back to this film here. Or fucking Kilo, I mean. Uh, back to this film here. Um, they're traveling on the road. That fucking asshole guy is talking about um, how, uh, how guys have to have sex. They have to have it, otherwise they get cancer or whatever. And this girl's like 17 years old. Or it looks like she, well, the actress is obviously older, but her character's supposed to be like in high school or whatever. And she's got to be at least 18 or something like that. She's like starting to believe him or something. And my raise over there is like, that's a lie and that's bullshit. I'm like, how fucking stupid can you be to actually believe that if guys don't have sex, they fucking get cancer or something? What? How fucking stupid is this character? But anyway. Oh. Anyway, back to this film here. They almost get in a wreck, and this dude like runs off the road, and he gets out of the vehicle. Some of the most atrocious fucking acting here. He gets out of the vehicle. He's like, "I'm okay. I'm okay." And he just falls down. I'm like, "Oh, suicide." I'm like, borderline suicide at this point. <laughs> just not to watch this film. Uh, I can just picture Satan in hell making you watch constant over and over this film in instant replay. <laughs> but anyway. He passes out, and they gotta go find help. They leave the fucking stupid-ass pothead there to hang out with him. To watch him, make sure he doesn't, I guess, just to stay there and watch him, make sure he's okay. And then the other three, uh, the asshole guy, I don't remember his name, uh, Heather, the hot chick, and uh, Renee Zellweger, supposedly the ugly duckling, but she's clearly not ugly. You have to go out and try to find help. Uh, they take off. They run to this woman's uh, place. Uh, uh, I don't know who, the fucking woman's name is Darla, the character is, I don't know what the actress's name is, I'll just call her Big Tits, cause some guys come by, like high school boys, and throw some shit in there, and she flashes them, because that's, they do, apparently do shit like this all the time, so she'll flash them, and you get to see her boobs, and, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you're a guy, and you're watching this, of course, you, you know, a boob shot, it's fine, but, I mean, she, I mean, her tits are decent size, they're fine, so, but as far, like, her tits outweigh her name, I mean, <laughs> are more important than her name, so I'll just call her Big Tits. But anyway, so they're there hanging out in Big Tits. Big Tits fucking obviously is supposed to, is uh, obviously you know going into this fucking fourth film that she's going to be a member of the fucking family. Uh, and she looks so out of place. The fucking Texas Chainsaw and Massacre family are just a bunch of like inbred hillbillies or whatever, I guess. And she fucking looks like a yuppie and it's just so out of place. But anyway. So Big Tits is like calling on the phone, calling Matthew McConaughey to come there and pick it, uh, pick up their vehicle or whatever, and, and uh, help them because with his fucking wrecker he drives, and he's got like a robot leg in this movie or like a robot like fucking leg cast or something that keeps jerking every now and then. He's got like four or five different remotes to operate it. What the fuck ever. But anyway, he shows up there and he's uh, he's uh, he's checking on the boy that's like not fucking fell over from I guess his shitty acting made him pass out. And then the other boy's like, uh, well, Matthew McConaughey goes, he's dead. And that boy's like, hey, he don't think he's dead. Mr. Hit talking uh, just a few minutes ago. <laughs> his acting is so fucking bad, the pothead guy's acting is. I'm just going to call him, his name, character's name is Sean. I'm just going to call him Fuckface. Uh, Matthew McConaughey says, motherfucker, I say he dead. And he snaps his neck. And so Fuckface uh, is like, uh, he gets scared and takes off, he takes off running. And Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey is so over the top in this film. He's one of the highlights just because he's so fucking over the top. Matthew McConaughey is like, I'm just going to kill you, no fucking bigger. <laughs> he gets in his wrecker and starts driving at him and fucking puts a spotlight on him. And the guy's just standing there, he's like, you're scaring me, mister. And after he just fucking snaps some guy's neck or whatever, and he's been trying to fucking run him over, and the dude's just, you're scaring me. I'm like, what? Oh. At this point, I'm starting to reach for the cyanide. <laughs> I'm reaching. But anyway, he fucking runs him over because this kid ain't smart enough just to get off the fucking road. So he runs him over, kills him, and grinds on him for a little bit, and you get a funny-ass scene. This is so fucking funny because it's so over the top, and it's Matthew McConaughey where he goes, All right, racing fans, here we go, where he puts a fucking uh, cassette in his uh, cassette player and turns it on, and it's fucking some kind of... 
some kind of like driving song, some kind of song or something. I remember exactly what it was. I probably blacked it out along with a lot more of this movie. And he like runs him over like multiple times and kills him. So fuckface is dead. Uh, let's get back to where the big tits is. Um, asshole, stupid ass, and uh, Renee Zellweger are there. Uh, Renee Zellweger goes back to look for, to check on. Uh, I guess she, I think she goes back to check on Sean. I'm not for sure. I, I don't even remember. I like I said, I blacked most of this movie out. But uh, dumbass and a uh, big. Uh, well, no, uh, they leave from there, and then they get separated, uh, dumbass, and, um, uh, well, they leave from big tits, and then they get separated, uh, on the road, because, uh, dumbass, uh, fucking asshole, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm on, I'm, her character's name is Heather, but I'm just gonna call her stupid chick, dumbass, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna call, uh, the, the asshole guy dumbass, so dumbass and stupid chick, they take off running after this vehicle, trying to catch it, uh, they head to this, uh, fucking uh house obviously the texas chainsaw massacre house uh fucking stupid chick or whatever i was gonna call her i've already forgot because these characters are so unmemorable even if i give them nicknames they just, they don't even stay with me i'm gonna call her stupid chick anyway uh stupid chick is out there sitting on the porch and, uh, uh dumbass kid goes around back and he gets held hostage by another member of the texas chainsaw massacre family who constantly is named we and he fucking constantly quotes famous people to make himself sound smart and it is so fucking annoying but it's slightly entertaining um but uh leatherface comes out there see stupid ass a uh, leatherface's portrayal in this movie well stupid chick leatherface's portrayal in this movie is fucking atrocious uh, he cross-dresses a lot, which I don't have a problem with, because Leatherface is based off Ed Gein, and he cross-dressed too, I believe. So I don't have a problem with that. It actually adds a little bit more creepiness to the character, but it's not that. It's just that the character is portrayed as a pussy, and I don't like that. Like, in the first movie, Leatherface would be a little bit freaked out uh, when people were, like, uh, in his house, because they were, like, trespassing or whatever. But in this film, whenever he, just, whenever he even sees Stupid Chick, he just starts fucking screaming non-stop. He screams for, like, fucking, feels like... 30 or 40 minutes and he grabs her and fucking locks her in the freezer like another thing about this movie is there's a lot of scenes stolen and redone from the original film why i don't know they were just gonna do a remake just do a fucking remake but whatever um he locks her in the freezer uh dumbass out there is being held at gunpoint by we the quoter uh he fucking puts him in the house and the dumbass says he's gonna take a piss while he's in there and call the police on his ass because he <laughs> He's going to try to find a phone, but of course he goes to take a piss. Leatherface shows up, hits him in the head with a sledgehammer. Another redone scene from the original film. Uh, he takes uh, Heather, or uh, excuse me, I almost remembered her character's name, Stupid Chick, out of the freezer. Hangs her on the hook like he did the chick in the original film. Another redone scene, and it pains me to see these scenes redone. It's such a shitty fucking film. But uh, he, then he, I believe he puts Dumbass in the freezer. Dumbass is dead, so he could just left him laying or whatever. Uh, stupid chick is hanging on the meat hook. Um, um, trying to remember what happens next. Uh, Renee Zellweger is out on the road. She runs into Matthew McConaughey. He gives her a ride. Matthew McConaughey cusses 24-7 in this movie. It's, it's pretty funny, but after a while, his dialogue is constantly cuss words. It gets on your nerves a little. Uh, but he's talking to her, and he, <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny. He tells her a story about some guy who picked up some little girl and chopped her into pieces and put her in her trunk. He's like, that motherfucker didn't have no fucking imagination. I mean, how plain can you get? <laughs> or something like that. But it's so funny. I actually enjoyed that. Uh, and then he tells her to look <laughs> look back there. And he's got uh, that fucking pothead and the other dumbass shitty acting guy hanging upside down <laughs> on his wrecker. Uh, that's mildly amusing. Uh, she jumps out of the vehicle. He chases after her for a little bit. She's in the woods. Uh, Leatherface chases after her. Amusing chase scene. Nothing to write home about. This Leatherface is so shitty. So it's hard to really give a fuck about him chasing after her. She manages to make it inside the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family's house, obviously. She's in the house. Uh, Leatherface still chases after her. She goes out the fucking top of the window, gets on the top of the house. Leatherface is still chasing after her. Again, decent little chase here. Uh, she fucking gets on the, this, uh, this uh, fucking line from the from like a greenhouse, it might be. Uh, or it's a cable, it's a cable that like goes over top of the house and she gets on it, Leatherface cuts it, she flies down and falls in this greenhouse. Um, 
then she's down there, and you, you sit here for what feels like like four or five minutes waiting for Leatherface to strike because you know he is, and it's setting up the suspense for it, and it's, it takes too long and draws it out too much. It's so fucking boring. Uh, and the Leatherface finally strikes. Uh, she takes off running, and she manages to make it to back to Big Tits. She's at Big Tits' place. Uh, you get another scene here that's so way too reminiscent of the original. Uh, Big Tits is there. Basically, you find out that she's actually a member of the family. Big fucking shocker. <laughs> Fourth movie in. I would never see that coming. Big Tits is there. Uh, she calls W Dumbass or W-E. I'll call him W Dumbass. I like that name better. W Dumbass comes in there. He starts fucking shocking her with a cattle prod, I think is what it is. Um, <clears throat> he puts her in a fucking plastic bag. So reminiscent of the original, but in such a shittier film. I hate this fucking shit. They had one scene in part three where they did this, where they, like, Alfredo took a picture of the chick and tried to charge her money for it. But in here, it's over and over. Fucking cannot stand it. Uh, he puts her in the bag, puts her in Darla's trunk. Uh, she goes to get some pizzas. If you know these films, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this in other reviews, but in these films, this family is cannibals, okay? They eat people. They kill them so they can eat them. But in here, they're not even fucking cannibals. She goes to get pizzas, and she gets a fucking vegetarian pizza. Oh, at this point, I'm, I'm starting to drink the cyanide. It's about to happen. But anyway, she gets fucking vegetarian pizzas and shit, heads back to the house, you get Matthew McConaughey there being so over the top, but he's fun, they torture her at the house for a while, same shit, different day, um, they torture her, Matthew McConaughey screams a lot, threatens to cut her throat and shit all the time, and then Darla Big Tits, I mean, not Darla, Big Tits talks to her, <coughs> but yeah, Big Tits talks to her, fucking keeps, uh, Telling her shit about how, uh, well, Matthew McConaughey's character's name is Vilmer. How Vilmer works for the fucking, some kind of agency that's over the government or something that's supposedly secretly in charge of everything. Kind of like the Illuminati. And you actually see the word Illuminati on, like, the side of Vilmer's fucking wrecker. <laughs> you don't need, like, government conspiracy X-Files shit in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. The reason that film works so well is because it's, well, it's simple. It's a simple idea. You don't need out there alien type X-Files shit for a franchise like this, you do not, this pollutes this story so bad, <laughs> it's unbelievable, but anyway, uh, Matthew McConaughey tortures her for a while, uh, fucks with her, threatens to cut her throat, and he asks her, are you having fun yet, <laughs> I actually thought that was slightly amusing, um, but, uh, Oh, yeah, before I forget, when Big Tits was on her way back to the house, somehow the uh, stupid chick uh, uh, made it out of the house and crawled all the way up there, all the way up the road to that certain spot. How she made it there, I don't know, but fucking Big Tits starts hitting, barely hitting her with a stick, and I'm like, what? Is this supposed to be funny? I mean, I think it, it might be trying to be funny, but it's just fucking stupid. And they bring her back to the house, and they got her there. Fucking Matthew McConaughey like bites her on the bites her nose off or bites her on the nose or something. Okay, scene. I don't know why she isn't dead yet. There's no reason to have this character here except to just keep brutalizing her over and over for no reason until it becomes uh just fucking annoying or redundant. I mean, but anyway, stupid chicks back there. Matthew McConaughey keeps torturing her for a while. She manages to get Leatherface is such a fucking pussy in this movie. He just <laughs> there's a scene in the film where Nate Zellweger is like. I'm leaving, and uh, fucking Leatherface is like, he's just screaming like, Aah! and she goes, you shut the fuck up, or something like that, and he just, he just quits, that's it, I mean, he's such, oh, he's so badly done, the character is just such a wimp, in the second one, he was more goofy, and, and a little bit of a joke, but uh, he still had that meanness and that rawness to him, and he was still able to fight, and he didn't just act like a big pussy, and just like, fucking wouldn't even put up a fight. Like he does in this film for like 90% of it. But anyway. So uh, she manages the, uh, well, fucking Vilmer, Matthew McConaughey and his girlfriend who happens to be big tits. Keep getting in fights and he keeps swinging her around and beating the shit out of her. Healthy relationship here everybody. <laughs> but uh, he keeps doing that shit to her all the time, all through the movie, over and over. Um, and uh, while he's doing that, I hope he kills her because she doesn't even fit this movie so fuck her. But anyway, he's about to, like, he's, like, got his foot down on her throat, about to kill her. Uh, Renee Zellweger manages to get the shotgun. She's going to blow him away. Why she just doesn't shoot him and then just get the fuck out of there, I don't know. But she, uh, I think she, Matthew, well, Matthew McConaughey is so over the top, he turns around and puts the fucking gun in his mouth and just screams, like, ah! <laughs> it is so funny seeing Matthew McConaughey like this. I mean, but, like, bad funny, like, stupid-ass funny. <laughs> but it's entertaining. 
Matthew McConaughey's doing that. She fires. Nothing happens. He takes the gun and says, pop goes the weasel. And then shoots it and it fires. Um, I think she shot it and it didn't fire or something. I don't know. But he, sh he says that, shoots it and it fires. And then basically after that, uh, she takes off running out of the house. Uh, and gets in uh, Big Tits's car and can just leave here. But fucking Matthew McConaughey jumps on the back of the vehicle and rolls around to the front. And he slides off while she's driving. And she can just keep going. Just leave. And then the fucking hood comes up and she wrecks. I'm like, wow. Just wow. I don't even give a shit if she lives after that. Fuck her. But anyway, um, so Matthew McConaughey gets her, brings her back in, knocks the shit out of her, pistol whips her, I believe, and knocks her out. And then she wakes up. She's at a fucking dinner table. Another damn dinner table scene, except this one is doesn't. <laughs> this one is atrocious. But they got her at the dinner table. Grandpa's there. Why I don't know. They changed everything else in this film. Might as well change this. Oh, and before I forget. Uh, you get like a fucking government agent dude who arrives in a limousine. He, supposedly, the family is supposed to just scare people and not kill them or something like that. It's just like a uh, supposed to be a spiritual experience or some kind of bullshit that makes no fucking sense. That's so underdeveloped and underwritten, it makes no damn sense. And there's no reason for it to even be here. There's no reason for the chainsaw. Uh, there's no reason for an inbred hillbilly family who eats people to have anything to do with being in a league with fucking aliens and government agents. Whatever, he shows up and tells uh, Matthew McConaughey he's been a dumbass or a dull boy, as he puts it, or whatever. Uh, he leaves. Matthew McConaughey starts like fucking cutting on himself and shit because he's like so he's fucking mental retarded. I guess he wants to uh, cut on himself. He does that earlier in the film too. He just likes to cut himself. I guess. Well, I'm not gonna say mentally retarded because I don't. There's nothing wrong with being. I mean, well. I don't, there's nothing, I don't want to badmouth handicap people or anything, because I don't want to be disrespectful to him, but this guy's just fucking stupid. Uh, but anyway, he's cutting on himself. I'm going to call him a fucktard, that's it. He's, he's a fucktard. He just keeps cutting on himself. Uh, then you get a scene where Renee Zellweger gets up, like I said. Uh, well, there, I mean, there's another scene in the film where you, uh, Renee Zellweger gets up and tells him she's leaving. I mentioned this earlier. And she fucking Leatherface goes, oh, and she goes, you shut the fuck down, and he basically does it. And uh, Matthew McConaughey comes in there and fucking sets a, a stupid chick on fire, and she survives that. And then Matthew McConaughey crushes her head, finally kills her. Thank goodness, I'm so fucking tired of this character. I'm so glad she's dead. She's finally dead. And then I believe after that is when you get the scene where the government guy shows up. I believe that was before that. But the government guy showed up or whatever and all that shit. Told Val, I mean, almost said Val Kilmer. Told Vilmer that he was being a complete dumb shit. And uh, he starts cutting on his stuff after the guy leaves. Um, this whole alien conspiracy plot angle and shit makes no fucking sense. And they never go into it at all. But uh, he leaves. Uh, he starts cutting on his stuff. And he's that takes off. Uh, Vilmer, uh, Matthew, I'll just call him Matthew McConaughey. Matt, uh, Matthew McConaughey gets a hold of him, or Fucktard. Yeah, Fucktard, I'll just call him Fucktard. Fucktard gets a hold of her, uh, but she grabs his uh, remote control to his leg, starts fucking up his leg, manages to get away. She gets away. Um, uh, so Fucktard runs up there, and you get a uh, Leatherface starts chasing after her, and you get a funny line right here where uh, Fucktard says, Vilmer, get that bitch! <laughs> Go! <laughs> it's, it's funny. It just calls me the way Matthew McConaughey says it. Like I said, this movie sucks ass bad, but every now and then you get one funny McConaughey line because he's so fucking over the top. And it's just funny to see Matthew McConaughey like this. It is hilarious. I just I hope somebody takes like a YouTube video and just edits these clips together with him. <laughs> Thanks like movies of him playing a normal guy and edits them together with him like acting like a fucked hard in this film. But anyway, um. So uh, Leatherface chases off after her, can't catch her. Uh, she manages to, another scene took from the original. She manages to get in this vehicle to get well, kind of took from the original, except they do it slightly different here. She manages to get in this RV with this older couple, and then fucking Matthew McConaughey shows up driving his wrecker, and he's got Leatherface on the back swinging at him, and they hit like this little ramp and flip over to the side, and then she gets out, takes off running. Uh, Matthew McConaughey gets out of the record and takes off running after him. Well, I don't know. He could just kept driving, but whatever. Uh, Leatherface is chasing after him. Matthew McConaughey gets assassinated by like a little bitty plane that flies down and hits him on the side of the head and kills him. I'm like, so you got fucking assassinations in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film? That's so fucking stupid, but whatever. Uh, then uh, 
The guy's name is Rothman, the government agent guy is. He rises his limousine when Azel Werger gets in it. They hightail it out of there while Leatherface is screaming like a, a little douchebag, like a whiny pussy. Uh, they hightail it out of there. He asks her where she want to go, a police station, uh, hospital, what? And I'm like, okay, whatever. And he's like, that's when he gives the big speech. It's supposed to be like a real uh, fucking spiritual experience or whatever. It's needless exposition bullshit that makes no fucking sense in this film. He drops her off at a hospital. She's there. And then you get a cameo by Marilyn Burns, an actor who played uh, Franklin in the first film. It, she's in uh, like a bed, and he's the orderly, and he's pushing her. And she just Marilyn Burns is like staring at her, and she's staring at her. And I, I, it's a cameo, and it's fun to see him there, but it don't make no fucking sense. And it's like, I believe it's a cop is talking to her, saying this ain't the first time something like this has happened. And he's like, do you know that woman? But the cameo is like thrown in there. It makes no sense in the context of this film. I mean, why is she looking at her? It's not, I don't even think, it's not even supposed to be the same character, I don't believe. So what the fuck is the connection here? What is the point? But whatever. And then you get Leatherface's chainsaw dance at the end for like a few seconds again, reminiscent of the original. And it feels so disrespectful because this film just fucking sucks. And then bam, movie's over. This film is like, oh, this is like the life and the soul of this franchise has been drained out by this point. There is nothing here. Nothing. I would not even recommend. If you are a fan of this franchise and have enjoyed the first and second movie, and even if you like the third film, uh, do not watch this movie. Do not. This will tarnish. This will tarnish your. This will tarnish this franchise for you. It will. Because it's that fucking bad. But anyway, uh, as far as the acting goes. Matthew McConaughey is okay just because he's so over the top. Uh, Renee Zellweger is fine. The rest of the acting sucks. The end. <laughs> big tits is there because she has big tits. Um, uh, the guy who plays Sean or whatever, Renee Zellweger's pothead friend, he's fucking atrocious. Uh, and then the other girl who plays, the character's name is fucking Heather. She's atrocious. Um, and she never seems to die. And then the other guy, the asshole guy whose name I don't remember. Uh, dumbass is pretty much his name. Uh, he's just okay. He's just passable. But other than that, I mean, well, other, uh, besides the acting, the story of this film is a clusterfuck of like multiple ideas mixed together and changes continuity completely from any other film in the franchise. Even the first film changes everything. Makes the cannibal characters and the vegetarians. I'll never forgive it for that. This film is utter bullshit. Rating for this film is a half a star out of a possible four. The only thing it give, the only thing it gives it a half a star is the Matthew McConaughey entertaining scenes where he just acts so over the top that it's funny. But uh, I'll see you guys again with another review for the remake, which I don't like that much, but is at least better than this film. This film is the worst in this franchise. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D is pretty bad. It's not that good at all. But it's uh, This film is worse still. This film is worse. This film is just so fucking atrocious. If I wasn't such a big horror fan, I would never buy this film. As a matter of fact, if I seen this film and watched it, I'd probably break the disc in half if I didn't care about completion with my franchises. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with another review. Well, obviously, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake is the one I'm doing next. Uh, so I'll see you guys again with that review. I'm not going to take any intermission breaks this time and do another film in between. Uh, I'm just going to go straight into these fuckers and finish them off. So to round up the original franchise, the first film I would give it four stars out of a possible four. The second film I would give it a low four stars. It's entertaining. Uh, it's an entertaining black comedy if you can accept it as that. It's it's really good. The third film is kind of like been there, done that. They changed stuff up. The new family isn't as entertaining, but decently memorable. It's cut to shit though. There's hardly any gore in it, especially after the second movie. You expect something a lot more gory. So it's only a two star okay film. This film half a star utter dog shit. I'm just, I'm tempted just to label this review Texas Chainsaw Dog Shit because that's just pretty that's about as good as this film is. But anyway. This film is just utter shit, and I'll see you guys again with another review, and I don't really see any way humanly possible to recommend this film. I don't recommend it at all. If you're a horror fan, stay away. If you're a fan of this franchise, stay away because it will tarnish this franchise for you. So I'll see you guys again with another review, and I hope you have a good day, and avoid this film at all costs. <laughs>